I was uh, thinking about creating a tutorial about Arnold shaders, a little bit more advanced, where we can mix different textures and shaders. And in order to uh, do this tutorial, I want to have some geometry. And of course, we can get ge geometry from everywhere, but let's build a fender, I thought. And we go to the side window for this purpose. And uh, under curves and surfaces, which is under modeling or here, you find this kind of curve. And uh, you start with uh, one line. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, for example, ten dots. The wheel might be somewhere here. And I actually can fix this by pressing F8 and moving this thing a little bit higher so it's more round and this one further down. I don't want to do adjustments now for time reasons but that's the way you would adjust these things. So we duplicate the curve and move it slightly up and because it's so close to the first curve here let's scale it slightly outside. We duplicate this curve again move it even further up and scale it slightly out. We duplicate it again and now we're leaving the wheel uh, house. Well, I don't know whether that's the correct meaning, the correct expression for it. Uh, we're getting more or less to the top of the car now. So that's what we do next. We duplicate it again. Let's control D always. And uh, we maybe rotate this just a little bit like this and flatten it out even more like this. And then we finally duplicate it and flatten it out totally like this and move it up. So important is that they are all separate and that they have the same topology, meaning the same amount of CVs. And by duplicating one curve after the other, we can ensure that they all have the same topology. So if I select them all, for example, and press F8, I see all the dots here. That's how the surface is going to be constructed now. Okay, back to F8. I need to select them in a pattern, uh, in, the, in the proper pattern to create a loft. The loft is here or when you're under modeling surfaces loft. It's so important that it's the top entry in this menu. Uh, best way to select them in order is here in the outliner. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six curves and then we press loft. This is our fender. Uh, it's totally flat now if we go to the perspective window of course it's flat because we have flat curves now but it basically has already the shape of a fender and um, we will go to the first curve now and move it slightly inside and then you see this little dent coming up which is quite nice really we want to have it here inside and the same thing with the third curve let's move it back inside the fourth curve even further inside the fifth curve even further inside and the sixth curve far away here so we have to readjust the this curve here to make this a little bit more flat and you see we have sort of the house for the wheel now and um, all the corners you can adjust little uh, details of course by Clicking, for example, on curve number one, pressing F8 to get to the component selection, and then maybe select those CVs here and the CVs here, and then move them slowly out like this. So they're inside here, and then they're slowly coming out here. We could do the same here. move them slightly in like this so it's a very soft 
flow of that surface and that's the nice thing about the um, NURBS modeling. You can never achieve this in the, in the polygon world. When we come to shading and texturing and rendering it's always good to put the things we're interested in into some kind of environment where it can drop shadows on and uh, whatever. We also need a light for rendering so that's all done in a few seconds the preparation for this rendering which we do now. It's basically gray and gray the surface is a gray Lambert not reflecting anything and the surface is a gray Lambert it's the same gray Lambert basically. What we see here is uh, uh, edges instead of a totally ra total roundness we can change this uh, in a second by rebuilding this surface actually the surface is built so simply that um, it could could be used if you transform it into a polygon object easily into a computer game it's low performance uh, intense so it's it's quite good for gaming now it's since it's so simple and it can only be done by by NURBS modeling in such a cool and direct way. Anyway, you go to surfaces and rebuild the surface. Uh, if you use the default settings, which means spans U and V four by four, we can try this. It still resembles a fender, but it's even more simple now. So let's undo this and pump the values up to like well 20 or 30 or something doesn't matter for rendering really but now we have quite a round thing here and when we render it again it looks just brilliant uh, although dull gray in gray which is global illumination which is good uh, but uh, of course it doesn't look like a fender so the first thing we're going to do is we uh, uh, assign a material to it and this time assign new material we won't go for the Arnold standard surface shader but instead to a mix shader it's uh, up here AI mix shader the mix shader is basically a shader which is open for two shaders let's find it in the attribute editor or here uh, right mouse click and material attributes it's right here so this is AI mix shader in the ad attribute editor currently showing black. What we're interested in is the mix weight which is set to 0 0.5 which means it currently mixes the two shaders uh, one by one. Um, so it's, uh, it's a total balance between the two shaders but what kind of shaders? We haven't put any shaders in the two fields here they're empty so let's um, um, actually if we render it it will render black because Arnold doesn't know what kind of texture is we have in mind here um, okay let's uh, click here to introduce the first shader so in the mix shader we need ordinary shaders so let's go to Arnold and shader and use a standard surface shader um, if we render it now we see not much difference a little bit of difference because we have uh, half a Lambert uh, and half uh, a pretty shiny um, AI standard surface shader but uh, we'll go to a preset and I'm afraid this will move a little bit out of the screen capturing realm now uh, anyway you have to trust me here I'll go to car paint and replace so let's check this here and do a rendering again the car paint is uh, a light blue which is changeable of course but I like this color so um, now we have the reflection here but uh, we can do more we can uh, add the shader number two and then mix the two uh, together so uh, you remember the blue the light blue we have currently this one now we add another shader Arnold and shader to find it more easily 
standard surface shader. And this time we go to presets. Again, you have to trust me here. And down here we have a two-tone car paint as, a, um, as one of the presets. And I replace it. So now, we go back here, we have filled both lines here, shader number one and shader number two in the shader mix. Um, and uh, we're currently uh, blending them uh, half of the first one and half of the second one. What does it look like in the rendering? You see it's a slightly different blue. And now we can use the slider to go back to the original blue. This is our shader number one to the other shader which is this one here. Which is I think quite beautiful and if we like for example this setting here uh, we can uh, let it stay there. Uh, of course we can map this thing and I'll do this in a minute. Now we want to introduce a light which makes the scene look a little bit more interesting. Even more interesting I would say because I actually like that ambient light uh, coming from Arnold with the uh, um, sky dome light. Now we choose an area light which sits here in the center of the scene. We scale it up quite a bit and then we move it back and up and forward and like this. It points in this direction currently. Well, of course we rotate it now a little bit so it looks down to our object. I think that's quite okay. If you're not sure and uh, if you want to place it more interactively with this thing selected, press and hold the spacebar, go to the hotbox, panels and then look through selected. It will enable you to look through the actual lamp onto the scene and once you're done with that you do the same thing uh, press and hold the spacebar, hotbox, under panels you go back to perspective, perspective. That's where we currently are. So let's get closer here. We have a new light in the scene now and we don't see much difference, do we? Well, the Arnold Utilities Light Manager helps us here. So this is the new light we introduced. It's called Area Light and this is the Sky Dome Light, the one which we started with. Let's reduce this to zero. Now we see the influence of the Area Light. It's zero. So the Area Light shape is here in the Attribute Editor and I also have Intensity and Exposure here. First of all I'll uncheck Normalize. So something turns up and this is already quite beautiful, isn't it? Uh, it's a uh, I, it comes from the from this light here. Now let's pump the intensity up to something like this. And now I can add a little bit of that ambient light from the sky dome, like this. So this is a nice thing to balance out lights. If you have five lights, this is ideal. This is basically the first stop to do this. When I um, look at this um, reflection here and I uh, rotate the camera you see how the light interactively works with a metal. This is not trivial at all and Arnold renders things here very very fast. Of course we can introduce a second light and do the same thing here. Also interesting uh, for you might be to map the color with a black and white texture. I just give you an example here. Uh, click on, we're in the area light shape one. Uh, we click on the checkerboard next to color and then we use the checker for example and then you see the checker texture turning up here. So it's as if you had fixed uh, attached uh, a checkerboard to the light where um, the white areas of the checkerboard uh, lets, uh, let, the white, uh, let the light pass through whereas the black blocks the light. If you uh, raise the, int uh, the brightness of the black you get this kind of pattern maybe you are happy with it. You can also build, uh, I break the connection here you can also build um, a 
geometry around the whole scene, which you don't render, but which uh, works uh, in a reflected way, reflecting way on our surface. And uh, for that purpose, uh, we will just uh, briefly uh, add a texture to the ground floor assign a new material Arnold standard surface and we render it again so the surface now does reflect and we will map the camera uh, the the floor actually the color of the floor with a uh, for example a ramp which goes from black to white which makes things look very elegant I think it's a very nice view here so finally let's go to the mix settings of our shader here so we have it here AI mix shader um, we currently have set the weight from to 0 0.67 we can map the weight meaning when the map is white more bright uh, then only one of the two shaders will pass through and uh, when the map is black the other shader will uh, pass through and uh, the gray tones would uh, enable a, uh, an in-betweening so um, if we do this drastically using a checkerboard uh, as a texture let's render it now we see that checkerboard active here now it's a checkerboard as a tech uh, as a texture which uh, shows us the second shader which is uh, I don't remember what it was called but which is the more sophisticated shader uh, the lilac one and the other one is the blue one so we don't have the mix slider now anymore the checkerboard does this for us let's go back here and break the connection now we have that again if we go back here we have the light blue tone when we go back here we have that really nice metal I actually prefer that very much to this one um, anyway let's try another mapping just to round this thing up um, for example a ramp now the ramp goes from one geometry uh, from one shader to another you see the um, at the top the second shader is working more then it flows into the other shader and uh, it makes a really uh, smooth in-betweening here that's the purpose of a ramp obviously uh, I saw a tutorial recently where uh, the AI noise texture was introduced which is a very sophisticated noise texture which makes a beautiful effect like rust you can produce rust there I put the link of that uh, tutorial which is quite nice down there in the description well I hope you like this and um, I wish you a good day